What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Infamous Ghost Money, and here's a quick news flash of what's been going on in fraud over the past week. Now, with Biden signing a recent bill extending the time to go after pandemic fraud, the cases will continue piling in daily, such as on August 24th, Samuel Baker of Southfield, Michigan, was sentenced to five years in federal prison after getting caught up in a scheme in which he was fraudulently able to obtain over $400,000 in unemployment benefits. Baker stole the identity of multiple people and used it to file fraudulent unemployment claims in the states of Michigan and Pennsylvania from between May 8th to July 28th, 2022. According to the criminal complaint filed against Baker, he was able to obtain 28 unemployment cards that he cashed out daily at various ATMs throughout Michigan at $1,000 per a card. Now it seems like Baker was definitely running up the government's money because he would purchase several Rolex watches with the money he acquired from pawn shops. Such as on August 2020, the FBI would uncover he purchased a $44,000 Rolex using all small bills since all the ATMs Baker went to to withdraw his fraudulent funds only gave bills smaller than hundreds. But your boy would eventually get caught slipping because homeboy was lacking hard body when it came to covering his tracks. According to the criminal complaint filed against Baker, he was captured on ATM surveillance on numerous occasions driving a car registered to himself while making these ATM withdrawals while attempting to hide his face wearing a camouflage cap and a face mask. But that camo apparently wasn't good enough because law enforcement was still able to identify him. Also, he would attach variations of the same digitally altered Michigan driver's license as well as mix the social security numbers he stole with his real information on several of the fraud UI applications that he submitted. Three of these claims are caught out in the complaint, indicating that Baker used his own photo on these bogus IDs, his own address, as well as an expired Michigan ID number that was associated with his true identity from 2015. In addition to Baker's prison sentence, he is ordered to pay restitution of $414,000 and has forfeited over $180,000 that was seized from his home, as well as multiple Rolex watches and gold coins. I don't know what to tell y'all people, other than ATM cameras for the win once again. Next, we have Jonathan Orpila Sinlao of San Jose, California, who pleaded guilty on August 18th to his part in a credit card fraud scheme in which he and several other co-conspirators defrauded Home Depot stores of approximately $1.9 million. According to the paperwork in Sinlao's case, from between February to July 2019, Sin Lao personally conducted over $300,000 in fraud charges using credit cards in the names of other individuals at Home Depot stores throughout the United States. He would use the stolen cards to purchase gift cards, ring home security devices, Google Home products, and expensive power tools that he and his crew would proceed to resell to pawn shops and on the black market. Sin Lao and his crew should definitely consider getting into carpentry though, because these boys was not good at fraud if you ask me. Because according to the indictment filed against Sin Lao, it mentions that he and his crew would use the same cards at different locations and provide their true identification each time they made fraudulent purchases. Additionally, they would be captured on store surveillance cameras hitting the same Home Depot stores for thousands of dollars in fraud purchases using different stolen card information each time. Until on July 4th, 2019, Sin Lao would visit an Oklahoma Home Depot location and attempt to process two fraudulent transactions when a store employee would catch wind that Ombre was doing fraud and contact law enforcement. Moments later, 5-0 would arrive at the scene and obtain a warrant to search a U-Haul that Sin Lao drove to the location in which they found receipts for fraud Home Depot purchases, boxes on boxes of expensive merchandise, and stolen credit card temporary passes. Sin Lao pleaded guilty to access device fraud and can face up to seven and a half years in prison and is scheduled to be sentenced on November 10th, 2022. Now let's move into sports news. Former NBA player Terrence Williams pleaded guilty on August 26th to leading a scheme involving over 18 former NBA players in which they defrauded the NBA's health and welfare benefit plan from between 2017 and 2021. Terrence, working with several co-conspirators, 
would figure out how to finesse the NBA health plan by creating fake invoices related to medical services that never took place. According to the case docs, Williams would first pull off the scheme for himself on November 2017, where he would be reimbursed $7,600 for chiropractic work that never really happened. Once homeboy had the dread down pack, he would begin recruiting other NBA players to get in on the scheme while they would pay him a kickback for putting them onto the play. Some of the players included on the indictment are Keon Dooling, Shannon Brown, Will Bynum, Glenn Davis, Christopher Douglas Roberts, Jamario Moon, and Sebastian Telfair. Well, it seems like Williams' scamming skills was just as mediocre as his skills on the court because the work he was getting cooked up for these false claims was grade A garbage. According to the indictment, many of these false invoices Williams would get created and submitted would repeatedly use the same invoice numbers, have the same procedures being completed, and have multiple grammatical errors. The dates for these false claims would be cross-referenced with these players' social media profiles and it would be uncovered that they were attending other events during these supposed procedures, making it completely impossible for them to have been getting procedures done at the same time. Finally, multiple conversations would be uncovered from Williams and his crew's emails and text messages where they spoke openly about the scheme and emailed fake invoices to one another. Over the course of the scheme, these mid-level ballers, led by Williams, would submit nearly $5 million in false claims and Williams would make over $300,000 in kickbacks. It really makes you wonder, what the heck was these NBA players doing with all the money they made while they was in the league? Anyway though, that's your fraud news flash. I hope you found some value in the video. If you did and you'd like to see more of these quick fraud news stories, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment with your thoughts below, and also subscribe to the channel to catch more of my content on financial fraud and stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. Aight, peace.